Okay, so this is the third installment in uh, the sequence of videos describing how to develop a mathematical model of uh, a DC motor, and we're now going to implement this model in Simulink, and we will uh, simulate it and show what happens. Now it turns out that you can also solve this using uh, Laplace transforms because we have uh, linear differential equations here. And at some point, we'll come back and show you how to do all of this with uh, Laplace transforms, but that's not yet. So this is where we ended up on the last video. We have two differential equations. We have this guy here, and we have this guy here. Okay, so what we're going to do next is prepare these, put these in a form that we can uh, immediately implement in Simulink, and then imp implement them in Simulink and see what happens. So um, we'll make this uh, go away, and uh, we'll rewrite the differential equations up here so it's all nice and tidy. Uh, Let's see, we have d omega dt is equal to kt over i l i of t. And we have uh, d i of t dt is equal to 1 over l v s minus R i of t minus k sub b omega of t. Okay, now in order to implement this in Simulink, uh, we need to, um, we, we don't want to have the derivative operators because uh, numerically they're ugly, they cause real issues. So we're going to take the integral of both sides of these equations. So we're going to take the integral of this equation on both sides, and we'll take the integral of this equation on both sides. And um, when we do this, we'll then get, uh, well, uh, when we take that integral, this term becomes omega of t. This term is the integral of i of t. Uh, we're going to uh, need an initial condition, i of 0. Uh, this becomes i of t, and uh, this um, all becomes the integral of this expression, and then we would have minus i of 0 minus kb omega of 0. Okay, so this is how you would deal with this if you uh, are simulating it assuming, well, this is how the initial conditions come into it. For the purposes of this example, we're going to assume that all initial conditions are zero. So there's no current flowing through the motor when we first start, and the load is not rotating. So we're just going to set all these guys equal to zero, which makes life a little easier. So now we have um, these two equations. So we have omega of t is equal to this integral. Um, this integral over here. We have i of t is equal to this integral over here. And now we need to implement this using a Simulink. So um, I will save this uh, so that it uh, shows up somewhere where I can see it as I'm building the model. Um, okay, so these are the equations we're going to emulate or implement in Simulink. So we bring Simulink up, and uh, let's see. You know, actually, I'm going, well, uh, I guess we'll keep going. I was going to do something different, but I guess we won't. Okay, so first we're going to need two integrators. We have two integrals that we have to implement. So we implement, or we go to the continuous uh, palette, and we get an integrator, and a second integrator, and put them on our, um, put them on our block diagram. Okay, we'll move them around a little bit 
just to make make it look tidy. Now the output of one integrator is going to be omega and the output of the other integrator is going to be i. So with any luck I can make this happen, though uh, the chances of doing it actually seem kind of... Um, okay, if I say signal properties, the signal name will say this integrator is omega. Okay, and there it shows up small enough that nobody but me can see it. Okay, so we'll try to do this again on the second one. And uh, we'll label this signal. This is going to be I. Okay, so we have a uh, signal that is uh, omega and a signal that is I. Now we'll implement the omega one first. Uh, the input to this integrator is kt over il times i. So that means that we need to scale um, i by a gain. So this gain we're going to put right here. We'll connect that up to the input of the integrator. And then uh, we'll connect the input of the gain, hopefully, to this signal i. Okay. Now this gain, in a minute, we're going to have to set to be kt over il. I haven't given you any numbers for those yet, so it'll be a minute before we can do that. Okay. So now going into the current integrator, we need three things. We need to have an r times i, we need to have, in fact we'll bring that back up so you can see it, we need to have, going into the, this integrator, we need to have v sub s, r times i, and kb times omega. So we'll start with v sub s. Uh, v sub s is a source, and so we'll find a step function because that's always a nice source. We'll bring that up and put it here. So that's going to be one of the inputs to the integrator. Uh, a second input to the integrator is going to be r times um, r times i of t. So we get our gain, which we're, we'll set this to r as soon as I tell you what that value is. And we'll connect this to i, because it's going to be r times i of t. And now the last term we need is k sub b times omega. So we're going to get another gain, and we'll, I guess, put it right here. Can I move this up? Oh, that would be too easy. Oh, there we go. And uh, so this gain is going to be a k sub b, and this is going to be connected to omega. So now I need to take these three guys and add them together. So we drop an adder on, we double click on it, okay, we tell it that we want to have three inputs rather than two, so we add a plus in its list of signs. You'll notice that now it's got three inputs. We wire it to there. We'll take this guy, wire it to there, take our step input, wire it up, and take our r times i and wire it up. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is be able to see what's happening with our signal. So we'll take a scope, and put it on omega, and a scope and put it on i. So we 
do the wiring thing. And we wire this one up. And we'll call this uh, omega or w out. And we'll call this i out. OK, now um, again, we're assuming that our uh, initial current and our initial i and omega, we're assuming that those are initially zero. If they were not, then we would need to go in and change the initial conditions in these integrator blocks. But since uh, we're assuming everything's zero, we're going to uh, not worry about that right now. So the last thing we need to do before we can uh, actually uh, simulate this thing is we need to know what values we're going to have for our constants. And the values that I found um, just off the web uh, for a particular DC motor is the following. Uh, whoops, let's actually do this in some nice bright color. Okay, so the torque constant is equal to um, 0 0.02 uh, Newton meters, that's the unit of torques, unit of torque over amps, which is the unit of current. Our back um, EMF, whoops, KB, is going to be 0.22 volts per radian per second. Okay. We'll assume that the winding resistance R is 1 ohm. The inductance is 0.2 henrys. And the moment of inertia of our load, I sub L, is 0 0.005 kilogram meter squared. OK. So, um, oops, not kilometers, kilogram meters. OK, so unfortunately, we're out of time on this video. The last video in the sequence is we will plug these values into the Simulink uh, block diagram that we put together, and then we'll fire up the simulation, and we'll see what happens. So stay tuned.